opportunity to come and have this iftar with you here, with the Muslim communities. This is not our mandate. This is the mandate given to us by Allah to come here. And inshallah, we have to give thanks to Allah for making us together here as Muslims and have this iftar with you. Secondly, Your Excellency, I take out this opportunity on behalf of Muslim community to thank you for your magnanimity and for inviting Muslims to come and have futar with you. This is a cause which you have been doing with your family. I remember very well last year when you invited us here and through your family you gave us the donation of 30,000 US dollars to assist the Muslim families, the vulnerable Muslim families in, in Nairobi and in Kenya to be able to do their fast. In fact, we are very happy, we are very glad that you have assisted us and we will always be grateful to you. Your Excellency, this time Muslim communities have bigger challenge than COVID. Most counties of Muslims uh, got problem of famine. Animals have died. Our source of livelihood, our livestock, they have died. Even wild animals are dying. Now it has gone to a further extent of human being dying. You know very well, northeastern, part of coast, part of upper eastern. These are the areas where 90% of Muslims stay and they live on pastoralism. And we have a challenge of famine. People are dying, Your Excellency. Through your office, as the deputy uh, president, through you, uh, you and your family, I know you have a charitable organization, I am requesting you, on behalf of Subkem, to assist, please to assist the Muslim communities who are suffering now. Majority of them are suffering, people are dying because of hunger, Please come to, this, to their aid and assist these families. Your Excellency, this is uh, the era of election, I know. I'll be lying to you if I sit, stop, sit here and tell you that 100% of Muslims are supporting you. But Your Excellency, as Subkem, you know, through our leadership, we have made a press conference. We are consulting with Muslim communities. We are consult, consulting with our, uh, with, with, our, with, with our constituencies. But Your Excellency, it is difficult when people are hungry, when people are dying, to talk to them about votes. Let nobody lie to you. Tumbo ikiwa na njaa, kama mtu wana kufa, ukuja umwambe mambo ya kura, Your Excellency, somebody is lying to you. It is not possible. First of all, weka chakula juu ya meza, tuwapeleke hawa wa islamu, tuwambie pole kwa njaa, Poleni kwa yale aliyotendeka and then tuwaombe kura ndio tuweze kuambia njia ile watafuata ili kesho wasaidike. So uh, on behalf of Subkem or on behalf of Muslim community I am appealing to you please to assist this Muslim community. With those few remarks, thank you very much. Asante sana. Asante sana. Uwezekano pia ukipiga kura vibaya unakana njaa. So piga kura kwa ile serikali itakulinda wakati ya njaa. Um, so now, I will also briefly invite the, one of the imams from Mombasa to speak very briefly, Sheikh Abu Qatar the Salim, for a minute. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillah, salatu wa salamu ala man la nabiya ba'dahu wa ba'da. Ntakuwa na nukta mbili. Nukta ya kwanza ni kuregesha shukurani za dhati kwa raisi wetu mtarajiwa kutualika nyumbani kwake na tukaweza kufuturu baada ya kuwa tulikuwa katika ibada ya saum ni jambo la kutufurahisha hasa kama jamii ya waislamu na ikiwa marangu ya kwanza kuingia katika 
eh, boma ya rais wetu mtarajiwa insha Allah tusemeni insha Allah eh. Eh, ikiwa ni marangu ya kwanza kuingia kwa boma yake na nikifungua saumu yangu ambayo kwamba eh, nimeshinda nayo kwa boma yake kisha akatuwekea sehemu ya kuswali bila shaka imetoa mawazo ambayo kwamba ilikuwa imekita kwenye bongo zetu dhidi ya rais wetu mtarajiwa watano na nakumbuka kwenye sijida yangu rais wetu mtarajiwa sijida ni ile ukiweka kichwa chini nakumbuka kwenye sijida yangu kuna dua nimeomba mbili dua ya kwanza nimeomba ya rabbi na tunajua mtumwa anasema aqrabu ma yakunu al-abdu ila Allah wa huwa sajid sehemu mtu yuko karibu na Allah ni wakati amefanya nini amesujudu nikasema ya rabbi huyu ambaye kwamba tunaswali ndani ya boma yake huyu ambaye kwamba tumefuturu ya rabbi mpatie uongozi awe rais wa tano hizi katika dua mbili nilioiomba moja ni hii Dua ya pili sitomweleza leo nitamweleza baada ya kuwa shakuwa rais. Tusemeni insha Allah. Mwisho eh, rais wetu mtarajiwa eh, nina hikikisa ambacho kwamba kimenisumbua na nilikuwa natafuta sehemu nzuri ya kukuelezea. Tunaona unapata tuhuma nyingi sana na hii ni kawaida siku zote mti wenye matunda ndio unapigwa mawe. Kuna hili jambo ambalo kwamba anajaribu kuchafuliwa rais wetu mtarajiwa watano kuhusishwa na jambo la kuwa ni mwizi twashindwa uwizi ulianza lini lakini tuache hapo si kila mwizi anatukanwa hapa ndo ustadhi wangu aliniambia kuna watu walikuwa wanamuombea dua mwizi fulani nikashangaa vipi kuna baba alikuwa ana majembe mengi ndani ya nyumba huyu baba alikufa mtoto wake alikuwa na miaka saba akabalehe miaka kumi na tano akamuuliza mama baba alikuwa na majembe mengi haya majembe kazi yake ilikuwa ni nini na hakuwa na shamba mama alikuwa hataki kumwambia lakini mtoto akamsumbua sana mwisho mama akamwita mtoto akamwambia njoo baba yako alikuwa akifukua makaburi na haya majembe akitoa zile sanduku anaenda kuuza zile miili anaziacha pale watu wanamka asubuhi wanapata miili juu ya kaburi siku alikufa huyo mwizi watu walishukuru sana walipumzika huyu mtoto akarithi kazi ya baba yake lakini akawa mbaya sana akawa anaiba zile sanduku akimaliza kuiba anachoma ile miili ya wale watu waliokufa wale watu wakaanza kusema Mungu amrahamu yule mwizi wa kwanza alikuwa anatuibia lakini anatuachia na ikiwa kweli rais wetu ni mwizi Mungu akurahamu mwizi wewe <laughs> Asante sana nataka kutambua a couple of people kabla sijamwita deputy chief kadhi wetu nataka kumtambua mama wa boma the next first lady wa taifa la Kenya mama Rachel Ruto ambaye yuko pale amekaa Tunataka kumtambua rais wa Jamhuri ya Kenya watano William Ruto sisi waislamu ndani ya Hasla Nation particularly katika chama cha UDA uruke uende huku uende kule nguzo yetu msingi wetu our foundation si mwingine isipokuwa majority leader wa wakenya wote ndugu yetu Aden Dwale nadhani kumtambua kiongozi wa ANC ndugu yetu Madvd Musalia Mudabadi nadhani kumtambua kiongozi wetu wa Senate siku moja nikiita nikiita leader 
Kindiki akaitika ye, nikamwambia si wewe leader ni Moses Wetangula wetu wa Senate. Dala kumtambua ndugu yetu Rigathi Gashagwa ambaye ni kinara walioleta vugu vugu la kumwambia uru Kenyatta sisi hatutouziwa ukabila sisi hatutouziwa uoga ndugu yetu Rigathi Gashagwa mbunge kutoka Nyeri. Wako watu kwa uwezo wa Mungu ambaye ndio kimlekelelezo kizuri tuko na magavana wa Katirina ndani ya pwani wamecheza ngoma kuliko kucheza masala ya kutawala yule mji wao wamechufuga madevu kuliko kufuga watu na uchumi na lisa lakini tuko na mgavana mfano mzuri tunaimpenda huyu nilipokwenda msambweni kumsaidia Faisal Badar Mungu ampe mvuri ya maisha marefu kampeni yake ilikuwa tuwaifanya kwa kuzingatia swa, time za swala tuwafanya kampeni mpaka dhuhri tuwaivunda tukishamaliza tuna kuswali tuwapiga kilanchi kidogo tuwafanya mpaka asri tuwaivunda tukishamaliza tuwaifanya kubadal asri mpaka maghrib tuwavunja na kila mtu enda zake leo waislamu wanafanya mikutano ya siasa pindi kufikiria mambo ya swala Mwenyezi Mungu ametupa ame sisi wa pwani na waislamu wa Kenya kiongozi ambaye ni mwadilifu ndugu yetu Salim Mburi ya governor wa Kwale Atakayekuwa governor wa Lamu si mwingine isipokuwa ndugu yetu Isa Timami yuko hapo Atakayekuwa governor wa Garissa alikuwa na mimi Lenana School ndugu yetu Major Deco ambaye yuko hapo Atakayekuwa governor wa Tana River ndugu yetu Hussein Dado yuko hapo sasa watu wa wajiri watatuchagulia baina ya Mukhtar deputy governor wa Wajir na Yuga ambaye amekaa hapa pia yuko hapo. Atakayekuwa governor wa Wasingishu, huyu jamaa anaitwa Koti moja. Na ni kweli alikuwa akivaa koti moja. Huyu alijaribu kungoa William Ruto kwa muda mrefu sana. Koti moja ali, watu wa, watu walimchangia huyu kumfanya governor wa trans, wa wasingishu nyinyi waislamu kila wakati mnataka kuchangiwa na kupatiwa bure sisi lazima tuige mfano wa wengine if we must be serious we must start contributing to politics wa mwisho sakaja sax atakayekuwa governor wa Nairobi kwa uwezo wa Mungu atakayemwangusha yule igave huyu pia alikuwa lenana na mimi hii <laughs> ile nana na governor safari eh nani mwingine anatafuta governor Eh? Mimi hiyo mimi hiyo ni ni, ni fwa yeah. hiyo ni rais. Aya wale ambao wanataka kuwatambua wengine my brother my mentor my friend ndugu yetu katika professor mkubwa katika the field of finance and economics ndugu yetu Abdul Latif Saji alitulea kuanzia tuko wadogo. Aliyekaa pale pia ni ndugu yetu Kolosh ambaye ni mbunge huko Wajir. Aka Mungu Kolosh ume mobilize baka dina ya DP. <laughs> Sisi <laughs> wewe tutakuangalia bana. <laughs> Ame mobilize dina. Aya, yule kuna ndugu yetu aliyokuwa waziri katika serikali ya Moi akamwambia Raila si yeye alioleta reforms ni Moi alioleta reforms walipoamua ku, kuacha Kenya ikuwe multi party. Ndugu yetu anaitwa waziri Hussein Maalim ambaye yuko pale. Kuna ndugu yetu ile high council ya hasla nation kwa ile ujasiri wake amesimama nje na uamuzi wa wengi katika borana community ndugu yetu ambaye anaitwa Colonel Raso lakini sisi tumempandisha sasa tumempatia Foster General General Raso wako wabunge wengi ambao wako hapa wale wabunge ambao wako hapa na muona mmoja pale wajua tu nitamtambua mashetani yuko pale no wakulia kweli huyo hatibu mashetani Ah iko governor Mandera aspirant. Yule ndugu yetu Abdi Nur. Eh, asante sana. Yuko pale yule ambaye ndio mwanambere. Mwanambe first born, mwanambe ndio first born wa Hasla Nation. Ndugu yetu Faisal Badar. Ye. Yeah. Uko Sharifu? Tuko na ndugu yetu wala Muiz. Ndugu yangu Sharifu ambaye ndio mbunge wetu wa Lamu East kwa Mungu kuwezo wa Mungu. Yuko mbunge wa wakili Grand Mula. 
<laughs> Yuko mbunge wa East African Community. Huyu pia alikuwa classmate wangu Lenana, ndugu yangu Abdikadir Omar Adel ambaye pia anawania ubunge wa Mbalambala. Haya, yuko nani ambaye sijamtambua? Ambaye alikuwa ni mbunge. Ah, yuko governor, senator. Wetu wa Lamu, Lay Tip Tip. Eh? Anwar. Wewe ni yupi huyo? Wewe, oh, wewe, ndio huyo. Ndio <laughs> huyo, mnamjua? Eh, hakuna mwingine sio? Aya katika kina mama yuko ndugu yangu Naomi ambaye ndio atakuwa women rep nominated senator wa Marsabit. Yuko ndugu yangu Falhada Iman ambaye ambaye uh, Falhada Iman ambaye ni nominated senator kutoka Garissa. Yuko governor aspirant wa Marsabit ndugu yangu Halkana Kelo akwa api Kelo. Alikuwa CAS katika chief administrative secretary ndio huyo ha, eh na iko wagombea wengi ah mama nasri pole sana wajua mimi naangalia kwa macho mama nasri ndio nominated mp kutoka Ford Kenya amenumentitoa na wili, na wetangula na sasa anasimamia kiti katika Ford Kenya women rep wa Wajia county Aya nataka kutambua wote wale wanaogombea viti tofauti tofauti ambao nimewaona wako wengi na sitowataja kwa majina. Ewe wewe ukiwa mmoja wao. <laughs> kwa hivyo wanake nikitaja mmoja nimeona karibu kumi, ishirini na wajua kwa majina. Itatakuwa dakika ishirini nyingine. Nataka kutambua wale watu ambao wamekihakikisha hichi kikao leo kimetokea. Da, William Ruto katika kujua kwamba sisi as a Muslim community as minority groups at a special interest that must have a special focus and must have a special strategy and must have a special input akaamua atengeze jopo la wale ambao wataangalia zile county 11 akaweka kamati ambayo inaongozwa na chairman wetu Abdi Dubat huyu anaitwa Fido kutoka Garissa katika hiyo kamati yuko ndugu yetu Hussein Muhammad ambaye huyu zamani alikuwa ni mtu ya mpira lakini ni mtu wa biashara sasa. Wapi wengine wale watu wa koka? Si huko ndugu yetu pale nilimuona Fauzia Abdi Ali. Niliona huko ndugu yetu pia Salma na katika pre, na kuna mmoja ambaye na yuko ndugu yetu Hadia. She's a known remember ya hii kamati. Had, na yuko pia mmoja wao pale Ali Idris. Bwana at least aonekana utambuliwe na wengi wengine. Lakini katika hapa tuko na mmoja na tu represent sisi katika presidential council. Aya, yule anatuwakilisha katika presidential council, si mwingine isipokuwa ambassador sale ambaye yuko pale. Haya. Kwa kuchunga wakati, sasa nitamwita deputy chief kadhi wa Kenya. Na mimi naamini yule deputy akuwe chief kadhi baadaye, sio? Kama Ruto atakuwa president. Yuko shida deputy kwa kichifkadhi. Kwa hivyo yule na hako na jina mmoja yake na mbili mzuri. Anaitwa Sukian Hassan Omar. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. A'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajim. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin. والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم وبعد شكرا لزوتك الله سبحانه وتعالى نبيلي شكرا لك ومنيجي ويتو بنا ديبتي بريسدنت بأكوان با متواليك بنا بريسدنت مواليكو Uh, kama huu ni sunna wetu ba kwamba inatambulika katika Uislamu Qur'ani inatueleza ya kwamba Ibrahim ama Abraham ni mtume ambaye kwamba inatambulika katika anatambulika katika dini zote na yeye ndiyo katika Qur'ani imetajwa kwamba alipopata wageni 
akawakaribisha vyema sana akawachinjia ndama tofauti na sisi ambao ni wageni wako na wageni wa Ibrahim ni ya kwamba wageni wa Ibrahim walikuwa malaika hawako wanakula sisi binadamu tunakula na tumekula vizuri sana asante sana uongozi na leadership ni kitu ambacho inatolewa na Mwenyezi Mungu Subhanahu wa Ta'ala Mwenyezi Mungu asema kulillahu mamalika almulk tuti almulka man tasha wa tanzi'u almulka mimman tasha wa tu'izzu man tasha wa tudhillu man tasha biyadika alkhair innaka ala kulli shay'in qadir kwa hivyo anayetoa kiongozi ni Mwenyezi Mungu na anayetoa ni Mwenyezi Mungu sisi kama wenyeji wako wote walihudhuria hapa lengo ni ya kwamba ni people are happy with their type of leadership that is why people responded already have been said ya kwamba tuko na mingi ya kufanya na chakula tunao nyumbani bila shaka wa Nairobi lakini tumeitikia hii mwito kwa lengo ambalo kwamba tunakuchangilia Waislamu wenzangu Tunaelewa kwamba kweli Mungu anatoa uongozi lakini njia ya demokrasia hii uongozi inapita kwa watu kwa njia ya votes kura Sisi kama waislamu tuna jukumu mbele Mwenyezi Mungu to make the right choice si euphoria si ubinafsi we must make the right choice lazima tuchague kiongozi mbaya kwamba tuafikiria kwamba will take this country to the next level usiku na mchana si sawa baridi na joto si sawa mwangaza na usiku si sawa choice ni yako lakini unajua vizuri sana sisi viongozi tuna jukumu ya kuelekeza watu wetu Where does the right choice lies for this country? Viongozi wa siasa huenda kawa wakati mwingine wanapeleka wana na self interest in one way or the other. There's that possibility. That is why we have viongozi wa siasa wana jump from this party to other party they keep on jumping. Kila mmoja kujaribu kwamba anaweza kupenya namna gani real sense lakini viongozi wa dini tuna jukumu mbele Mwenyezi Mungu ya kwamba to advise our followers watu wetu sawa sawa bila kulemea huku wala wala huku i have no doubt where honorable duale is When Allah akiwajalia kwamba wasende kuwa power do you doubt that right ya muslimu itapotea do you doubt we have seen before and we have that confidence that where duale is our right is fully secured <laughs> therefore the choice is ours It's up to us to make the right choice. Religious leaders, my friends, my brothers, we must take our role properly. We must use our pulpit at the mosque and the various jukwaa ambako tunazo 
tuelekeze jamii sawa sawa kwa hayo machache Mungu atujalie kila la khairi thank you so much Asante sana I just to acknowledge that the head of the presidential communication yule anahakikisha Ruto anaonekana vizuri yule anahakikisha Ruto anasema mzuri yule anahakikisha Ruto anajulikana vizuri is no other than Dugetu who sits in the presidential council Hussein Mohammed Alafu yuko ndugu yangu mashallah he never asks for any recognition and sometimes he, he'd rather be totally unnoticed but his impact is so huge ambaye alikuwa chairman na National Bank ndugu yangu Muhammad Hassan pia is part of the presidential council Alafu mimi mimi sijaambiwa nakaa kwa nini lakini mimi waenda hizi mkutano na hakuna mtu ananifukuza so nimejichukulia niko hapo hata saa ingine naingia meeting za DP akati anakana mawaziri but anyway we are quite a significant number of muslims who populate the dp's ecosystem in terms of delivering the presidential elections and the presidential uh, power na mimi nataka kuambia waislamu mimi kama ingekuwa nataka kiti there are easy ways and those easy ways are proving not to be as easy ndugu yangu wengine wanaenda odm le chungwa bovu wanasema hati huko hii ndio sijui stronghold ya watu fulani mimi nikakaa chini na wenzetu kina Mohamed Ali kina Aisha Jumwa na kina ndugu yetu William Ruto na wengine tulipokaa hapo chini tukasema kiti cha Mombasa ni chetu viti vya northern kenya ni vetu we are not looking for political positions we are looking for political power manake wazungu wanasema Power respects power. Leo Uhuru Kenyatta anapanga jamii zetu. Like kwa ajili he knows we have no power. Na kila Muislamu ambaye anapangwa unasikia ni mwizi. Ati yako una KRA inamfuata. Sijui yako na nini. Leo mimi nasikia karibu wagombea wote wa azimio ndani ya Northern Kenya wako na kesi. Wewe kama uweje kujisimamia at a time of need you will never be able to stand up for your people at the time of need. Na mimi nawaambia William Ruto akishika serikali kama wewe uko na kesi ya mauaji tutakupeleka kotini kama wewe uko na kesi ya corruption tutakupeleka kotini you can seek reprieve through an election but you shall not seek immunity or impunity throughout aya kwa hivyo sisi kabla unajua mimi nilikuwa ni MC sasa nilikuwa ni hand over kwa mvuri nikajua mike itaenda so nikasema niseme kitu kidogo unakulia hapo sio na huyu ni dr abdul mwasera He is a principal administrative secretary katika ofisi ya DP. Kwa hivyo kumalizia deputy president. Sisi tuko katika vuguvugu la UDA, tuko katika coalition ya Kenya kwanza because we want power to protect the Muslim community and to advance the interest of the Muslim community. We need power to protect our women, to protect our youth from extrajudicial executions. We need power katika coast region. We need power katika coast region. Kutumia ile ile jeuri ambayo Uhuru Kenyatta amepeleka anapeleka port katika shamba la babake huko Naivasha turudishe back the port into Mombasa. <laughs> Na ile kitu wamefanyia port DP. There are three things we must do as I, as I see exit. Mwanzo we must make public the contract ambayo ile secure SGR ikaweka port as the collateral. We must we must free the port from the burdens of the SGR so that it becomes an asset for the nation. Na kama kina Uhuru Kenyatta na mwingine yoyote might have entered that contract negligently and illegally, we have no obligations as a government to honor those terms of the contract. Number two, wamechukua we we create public infrastructure kwa kutumia pesa yetu. We created CT2, container terminal 2, wame privatize to the MSC ambao ni kampuni ya kina Uhuru Kenyatta wamechukua bath 11 to 14 built by public resources wame privatize wanapatia dp world so that people can make benefit from public investment hizo contracts mbili tunazifuta zinarudi kwa mikono ya raia wa Kenya wanataka ku privatize port ya, ya kina mashetani ya, ya kule ya fish port na wanataka ku privatize port ya lamu to stop this gravy train of people acquiring public assets through a process called PPP we must ensure 
we gather power to protect our people and to protect our resources and to protect our future and to give our children jobs and to protect the integrity of the Muslim community. Why are you mingi? Da sasa nataka kumwalika yule governor. Wacha nialike governor kidogo yule governor lazima ongee huyu. Oh wewe ndio utalike. Yule governor huyu amefanya maajabu huko kwale ba. He has educated young people. He, has, he created 600 ECDs to ensure that every kid has an education. Why are you mingi sasa wacha nialike Aden Dwale? Bismillah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah rabbil alamin. Wa salatu wa salamu ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in. Uh, Your Excellency the Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya, Mama Rachel Ruto, tunawapongeza kutukaribisha kwenu hapa nyumbani. Hawa is, kwa niaba ya hawa Islamu kuwa na iftar na nyinyi we really want to thank you and this has been our home for many years mheshimiwa musalia mheshimiwa wetangula our various governors and governor aspirants our members of parliament our senators our women rep our nominated members of the National Assembly and Senate, our, our religious leaders, when you see Professor Isa G and the whole team of Jamia Mosque, when you see the Deputy Chief Qadi and the Acting Qadi, when you see the leadership from Subkem, CIPK, the Muslim professionals and business leaders sitting here this evening, our key elders from various communities. I am so happy to have seen the chairman of Parklands Mosque, our elder and chairman Firoz, our great women leaders, our mothers, our sisters. Salaamu Alaikum. Your Excellency, our party or our coalition Kenya Kwanzaa has about 510 aspirants, including myself. When I say aspirants, even sitting members of parliament are aspirants as of today, including myself. And out of the 510 Kenya Kwanzaa aspirants from governor to MCA, I think tonight we have here about over 290. Now I'm talking about the Muslim leaders, aspirants from Muslim areas. That is about the five counties of northern Kenya, coastal counties, Nairobi, and other parts of the country. UDA alone has 5,000 uh, aspirants, but I'm talking about those who are here tonight, Muslim uh, aspirants. I'll just have two things to say, then invite... Governor Mvuria to speak on behalf of all the governors, because I'm speaking on behalf of members of parliament and senate. And then I'll ask our flag bearer, the governor Mtarajiwa of Nairobi and the senator of Nairobi, my good friend Honorable Sakaja, to say something. Then I call then our national leaders. Your Excellency, let me say tonight that uh, I have worked with the two contenders for presidential this year, both Honorable Raila Odinga and Honorable William Ruto. And I have worked for many years with the outgoing president. So I don't think, politically speaking, I am the best place to judge the three people. So I will not judge the current president because he is not a contender. Let me judge between the two leading presidential contenders with reference to the Muslim community. And I want to say it without any fear of contradiction to my Muslim ummah. There is no senior Christian leader 
senior, I mean, at the highest level, who has contributed to the welfare and the well-being of the Muslim Ummah. The sheikhs from Garissa, Wajia, Mandera, and coastal region are sitting here. The number of Farambes for madrasas and Islamic institutions that the Deputy President William Ruto has taken in Garissa is footprints. They exist today in Garissa. They exist today in Wajia, where you go to Tarbaj, when you go to Al Falah Islamic School, when you go to Mandera, the chairman of Al Mustaqbal, the biggest Islamic university in Garissa, is sitting here, Sheikh Hassan. Is my testimony. Tell me where Raila Odinga has contributed to any Islamic institution. You know, facts don't lie. Does, have you ever seen his competitor anywhere? And I, when I see my good uh, brothers, uh, Supkem, you don't need to consult us. You know the challenges the Muslim leaders are facing. And we expect the deputy president to resolve. The Muslim Ummah is facing serious extrajudicial killing. Our children are disappearing every day. It is very sad that nobody wants to speak here. When you go to our counties, you'll find mothers who either their son, their brother, or their husband is missing. You know the Equalization Fund, a constitutional provision given to Muslim counties. Up to today, it has not been operationalized. That's because we are Muslims. You know the insecurity taking place in our regions. You know what our people go through when they go to look for registration and citizen documents, either at Kenyatta, I mean at Nyaya House, or in our ID centers in our counties. Those are the things that will concern us when we put the ballot. When we go to the ballot, we must ask those questions. And we must vote for the government that will address those issues. We must address. This ballot you are going to cast will be used to run the next government five years. So the way our acting chief had said, the contest, this election, is very clear. All those of us who are in government from the Muslim Ummah in 20, from 2013 to 2018, including myself, who hold a constitutional office, were done through the influence of William Ruto. Because I came through URP. <laughs> Minister Aden, Minister Amina. And the day we were sidelined in this government, tell me, even the Muslim organizations, tell me any Muslim who has been appointed. William Ruto's competitor stood in public and he said Mandera does not deserve the revenue allocation that they got through the constitution. He said it in Kiambu. He said it everywhere. And it is very sad our leaders are kneeling down for him. Very, very sad. The BBI that marginalized the people of Kenya and more so the Muslim counties. You know BBI, what it did? It denied the whole of coast region and, and parts of northeastern. Tana River, Lamu, Brother Itimami is sitting here, our governor. Tana River was getting 4.8 billion. They said 2 billion must be slashed. Isiolo was getting 4.2, BBI said. And before, before Mandera was losing 1.5 billion. Kwale, Lamu, Garissa, who are the proponents of BBI? Who are the proponents of BBI? It's not William Ruto. It's not Musalim Davadi. It's not Aden Duale. It is the High Sheikh brothers. It's Azimio. I mean, Muslim leaders, 
There's nothing you need to consult. What do you want to consult? The facts are bare. The facts are my senior friend and counsel, Ahmed Nasir, puts it on Twitter for those even who don't know. Every day, Ahmed Nasir puts it on Twitter. And he's sitting here. Ahmed, from morning to evening, he tells you what ails the Muslim community. So what other decision do you want to make? And Ahmed, we want to respect you. You are our warrior. And we will stand with you. And please, please, my dear Muslim brothers, do not elect cowards in this election. Do not elect cowards. Do not elect cowards. We are people of faith. If you are a Muslim, you should not be a coward. If at all, you have a very strong Islamic faith. So do not be. A lot of leaders have cowed. They are being threatened. The criminal justice system. Today you have seen the speaker of Nairobi County Assembly has been arrested. Just because last week, him and 35 MCAs of Nairobi visited the deputy president. Very shameful. And the leaders of the criminal justice system, you are not going to retire with the president. After four months, we will audit you. We will. We will audit the men and women who are in charge of the criminal justice system and who allowed those institutions to be used contrary to the Constitution. So, Your Excellency, I can bet, inshallah, in the month of Ramadan. And you know why BBI collapsed? The judgment was given last year in the month of Ramadan on the last 10 days. We prayed. We prayed at the Tahajjud. And five judges came and they said, there is no BBI. Seven other judges came, they said, there is no BBI. And let me tell you the truth. The best judgment in the, court of, in the Supreme Court was written by a Muslim, Judge Muhammad Ibrahim. <laughs> takbir. Takbir. Please read the judgment of one Muhammad Ibrahim. Takbir. If you are a Muslim sitting here, you know the choice. We can share something with William Ruto and Musali Mudavadi and Rigadi Gashagwa and Moses Watangula and the whole team. Pray for us. We want your prayers. We want your support. And there are many Muslims who have come out to support us. So, Your Excellency, you are not going to walk this thing alone. Uh, let me finish it there. You have got warriors. Some of us sacrificed, coveted constitutional office with a lot of pegs, powerful offices. And we said, hatuwezi kuwa kati ya dhulma. Nyenye munajua katika, in our own religion, God says, Allah says, mimi sita wa dhulumu, na sita kubali nyinyi mudhulumiane. What William Ruto and many of us have gone through is Thulma. But we stood firm. We were never cowed. And we actually said, thank you for being our leader. You know, if the leader himself was cowed, all of us could have taken. But you stood firm, and then we stood firm. And today, you know, one of our great leaders who came... Uh, I don't know whether it was Honorable Masali or Honorable Weta. One day he told me, you know, you guys stood firm. You know, we went through. Even our friends in business were arrested, were charged. But we never freaked even one day. And now we have got three months. So if you are in the criminal justice system, you have got questions to answer when the audit comes. We shall revisit. We shall revisit all those that you have done. With those many remarks, let me call one of the governors that stood firm. And he is not corrupt. He stood firm. You cannot be cowed. 
and he delivered the Musambweni parliamentary seat. Where is, where is Faisal? Our first baby. Thank you very much, Faisal. <laughs> Governor Mvuria, a man I have a lot of respect for. Karibu, Governor. Governor of Kwale. Asante uh, <laughs> uh, sana Mheshimiwa Adan Duale eh, Mheshimiwa Naibu Rais wa Jamhuri ya Kenya ambaye pia ndiye rais wetu tarehe 9 mwezi wa 8 inshallah viongozi wa tabaka mbalimbali wakiwemo Mheshimiwa Msali Amdavadi Mheshimiwa Wetangula Waislamu wenzangu na viongozi wote asalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Kwanza nichukue nafasi hii tuweze kumshukuru Mwenyezi Mungu kwa sababu Mwenyezi Mungu ametuwezesha tumeweza kuhudhuria hafla hii. Na pili tumshukuru sana Mheshimiwa William Ruto pamoja na mkewe na familia yake kuweza kutuandalia difa hii ya jioni. Mheshimiwa Naibu Rais, uwalishi wako ambao umetuleta hapa tunataka kusema asante sana kwa sababu hili si jambo la kawaida ni jambo ambalo sisi waislamu tunapaswa kumshukuru sana Mheshimiwa William Ruto. Mheshimiwa William Ruto Tumekongamana hapa kutoka sehemu mbalimbali za nchi yetu. Kutoka kule mashariki, kaskazini, pwani na hapa Nairobi na sehemu nyingi za Jamhuri ya Kenya. Tukiwa leo tumezivunja shughuli zetu ili kuja hapa kufuturu na kuomba pamoja na wewe. Mimi pia nina hakika kama Waislamu hatukuja hapa kwa bahati mbaya. Na tunakujua pia mchango wako mkubwa katika kuendeleza Uislamu kupitia michango ya madrasa, michango pia ya kusaidia walimu wetu, michango ya misikiti ambayo umeifanya katika sehemu mbalimbali za nchi yetu. Na mwishimiwa naibu rais, sisi wa islamu safari hii. Tunataka kuingia kwa serikali, si kwa mwaliko. Lakini tunataka hii serikali tuipange na wewe. Kwa sababu kama wa islamu tuna maitaji mengi. Na yale maitaji mengi kutimia, ni lazima tukae na wewe. Tukubaliane na wewe na tukuunge mkono kwa malengo. Na ishara ya kwanza ambayo tumekupatia ni kukubali mwaliko wako hapa nyumbani kwako. Kwa hivyo lile jambo la pili linapaswa kufanyika. Wakati unaweka sahihi na zile kaunti ya na saba. Ile service chata yako ukiwa rais wetu tarehe tisa mwezi wa nane ile mkataba mwingine ama ile chata nyingine ambayo unapaswa kukubaliana na kuweka sahihi ni kwa sisi wa islamu kwa sababu tumeona maneno mengi na nasema hivi kwa sababu tungependa zile nchi za kiislamu ukichagua mabalozi wawe ni waislamu ukiangalia katika sehemu mbalimbali za nchi yetu kuna wafadhili wengi ambao wanaweza kufadhili misikiti na mambo mengi ya kuendeleza dini ni balozi wa Kiislamu ndiye anaweza kulifahamu hilo kwa hivyo tunapoendelea kujadiliana tunapoendelea kufanya siasa Tunataka kukuhakikishia. Hii serikali tutaunda pamoja kwa sababu tuna mahitaji mengi ya pamoja. 
Tumeona pia vyombo ya usalama ikitumiwa kiolela kuwadhulumu waislamu. Hata vetting ya good conduct ya waislamu iko tofauti. Vetting ya visa ya kusafiri ya waislamu iko tofauti. Kwa hivyo tunataka serikali yako mheshimiwa tunapokuunga mkono tarehe tisa mwezi wa nane tuweze kuyasuluhisha maneno haya tukubaliane na tuunde serikali ambayo itawajali waislamu zaidi na mimi najua mheshimiwa naibu rais umepitia madhila mengi changamoto nyingi na ulivyo mwezi mtukufu wa ramadhani tunaemezana zaidi kuwa na subra tunapofunga mwezi huu si kwamba hatuna chakula nyumbani lakini tunafunga kwa malengo tunakuwa na subra na wewe umekuwa na subra sana kwa sababu yale ambayo umeyapitia ni kupitia subra ndiyo umeweza kufaulu kufikia hapo hizi siku kumi za mwisho waislamu wenzangu ni muhimu tumuombe sana mheshimiwa William Ruto ili ule mkondo uliobakia aweze kuupitisha vizuri na aweze kuwa mshindi na wakati anakuwa mshindi sisi tuwe tumechangia pakubwa na wanasiasa wenzangu mnawaona wapinzani wetu wameanza kukatikiwa na mawazo wao wao wenyewe ndio walidalilisha bandari ya Mombasa jana wanatuambia ati ndani ya miezi mitatu watayabadilisha hayo sisi hatutawaamini tutamuunga mkono William Ruto ili tuendeleze uchumi wa wananchi na kwa niaba ya wenzangu wote kutoka pwani na wengine kutoka kwale tunataka kukuhakikishia tutatembea na wewe kwa sababu wewe unaangalia maneno ya wananchi na hayo ndiyo ya kipaombele kwa hayo machache mimi nawashukuru sana Mwenyezi Mungu awabariki na tuweze kuendelea na mfungo vizuri na Mwenyezi Mungu aweze kuzitakabali dua zetu aweze kukubali sala zetu na aweze kutuepusha na yale yote yaliyo mabaya palipo na uzito atufanyie wepesi asalamu alaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh Mheshimiwa Deputy President eh, nikubali niwaulize wale waislamu marafiki zetu ambaye wamefanya hii program iwe successful wasimame ni wataje eh, tuko na ndugu yetu Abdi Dubat hawa ni wale wana wanakusaidia katika kampeni yako ndugu yetu Hussein Muhammad unamjua anaitwa Hussein wa Boli alikuwa football Eh, tuko na eh, Ali Idris wapi wale wengine pamoja na our ladies beautiful ladies there two of them and where is Fozia where is Fozia she must be somewhere there is Muhammad Hassan one of our big invest, uh, investment banker eh ambaza raswale simama Ambassador Swalehe Hussein who you are Hussein who are communication uh, director Hussein Simama have I left out anybody Ya yeah, Salma Ya yeah, Salma must be somewhere Ya yeah, Salma is there And Hadia and of course uh, Abdi Jewelry of Kilimanjaro and uh, Farid where's Farid Farid I'm sure my good friend and wakili Adil must be here somewhere Adil so these are the good people uh, who made uh, uh, this night successful mine was just uh, to be with them I did nothing these are the people who did the good work 
So we bless him. Let me now take this opportunity to give, uh, you know, the next governor of Nairobi, inshallah, will be a man called Johnson Sakaja. And the Muslim community, don't clap for him. And uh, said Sakaja, the Muslim community is a serious stakeholder in the city of Nairobi and county of Nairobi. So I'm giving you this opportunity, number one, to look for votes, and two, to make sure that we are part and parcel of your government. Inshallah. And we have an iftar uh, for him on Sunday, inshallah. We are doing uh, iftar for a number of uh, governors where we have interest. We'll do Nakuru tomorrow night. Then we will go to Kitui. Then we will go to we'll do Mumba Nairobi and then we'll go to Mombasa. Not the deputy president, but uh, this team and uh, other key leaders. Asante sana. Your Excellency, the Deputy President and incoming President of the Republic of Kenya, our incoming First Lady, Excellencies Musalia Mudavadi and uh, Wetangula, allow me because of time to associate myself with the protocol already established. All our esteemed guests, Asalaamu Alaikum. Kwa niaba ya viongozi wa Nairobi, um, na wakaribisha Nairobi. Najua mmetoka meneo mengi. Siwezi wakaribisha kwa Aslas Mansion kwa sababu mwenyewe amekaa pale na mzee wake yako hapa. Lakini kwa wale ambao wamekuja Nairobi karibuni sana, tumefurahi sana. For me it is an honor and privilege um, to join you today. Um, as I think one of the speakers said, we don't come together because we don't have food in our places or because we cannot do this on our own, but because we are African and because there is beauty and blessing when brothers and sisters come together. So nimeshukuru sana kwa mwaliko huu na kuwa hapa mimi mambo ya iftar sio mpya kwangu na sijafanya kwa sababu ya siasa mimi nimezaliwa Ngara nilikuwa sikosi iftar hapo Karioko na California tangu nikuwe mdogo my best friends wakati huo walikuwa kina Abdul Chalo kina Naomi Jasho wale wa maeneo hiyo bado wako because back then katika mji wetu wa Nairobi it didn't matter where you come from it didn't matter what your second name was. What mattered was the content of your character. Na yondiyo Nairobi na Kenya ambayo tunataka. Ambapo popote ambapo umetoka. We can see ourselves as brothers and sisters and as one people. Ile jambo ambapo ntagusia tu. Kwa sababu nimepatio daka moja. Ni kwamba sisi kama Kenya kwanza. Na nimefrae ni mwona viongozi wa mosque zetu ambao wako hapa ambao tunajuana. Tumekua tunawasiliana na ile mambo ambayo tunafanya ni vizuri tujue the difference between us and those who we are competing with is very clear there are those of us who even paid the price because we believe in equality of opportunities for all Kenyans that there is no Kenya A and Kenya B kuna wale wanafikiria jambo ambayo inahitajika Kenya hii ni wazee wa ene watano tribal kingpins wakikaa pamoja wagawe serikali kutakuwa na amani lakini kuna wale wetu ambao tunaamini that if in our country you know that your child in Isiolo or in Mandera has the same chance at life as a child in Kisumu or Nairobi tutakuwa na amani ya kwamba unajua ile uchungu mama ambaye yuko eh, Garissa ama mama ambaye yako nakuru anasikia wakati apati chakula kwa mtoto wake ni sawa na yule mama ambayo yuko pale pengine then we become one country na ndio maana sisi tunaangalia mambo ya uchumi that we can equalize opportunities wakati mswada ulikuja kwa senate na niliomba ndugu yangu hapo anisamee kidogo kwa kuna watu ambao hawakutuelewa sisi tulikataa tulikataa kabisa hatukukataa maeneo ambayo wana watu wengi wapate pesa yao but we said you cannot entice me as a Nairobi senator with 100 million which is 0.3% of my budget so that Mandera, Wajia, Lamu ipoteze 30% of their budget. That is not the Kenya we wanted. Tulisema kwamba sote tunaweza songa mbele pamo pamoja and that no one would lose. Na ilikuwa ni masiku marefu sana. Your excellency for one month sikulala kwangu during weekend kwa sababu police walikuwa hapo na DCI but ultimately hiyo 100 walikuwa natuongezea Nairobi ikakuwa bilioni tatu na kuna county ambayo ilikosa what we want for this country 
is equal opportunities wherever we are kila mtu ajihisi ni mkenya kabisa mheshimiwa dwale amesema kwamba waislamu are a big stakeholder in nairobi vile mheshimiwa mvuri ameuliza ya kwamba deputy president upange serikali yako na hawa mimi na waahidi yangu ya nairobi tunapanga pamoja na mnajijua wale ambao tumefanya kazi pamoja na tueleze wa Kenya wengi you know when you are accustomed to privilege equality feels like oppression but let us not be tired to tell them that this country remains indivisible one united country na tutanzia Nairobi mabiashara zetu tutachunga ile mambo mnapitia mimi najua sana sana wale wa South Sea na pande ya Isili unaingia kwa duka unapata license ni 15 sijui kuna ya moto kuna ya maji kuna ya nini itakuwa ni moja mnanilipa mimi nitalipa hawa watu wote wengine because we are here for one reason to spur economic opportunities for all our people so nimeshukuru sana na nimeshukuru mheshimiwa Dwale mheshimiwa eh, wale tulikutana nao akina Idris na kina eh, Hussein Sunday tutapata wakati wa kuongea maneno mengi mengine kuhusu Nairobi na kuenda kushi, kuendelea kushirikiana pamoja i am so grateful tunaombea saum makbul may allah accept your dua na kati hayo dua tuombe taifa letu libaki moja asanteni sana tuko pamoja your excellency with your permission let me call the former governor and current aspirant governor for tana river you know this man was a uh, This man was a deputy to Fred Matiangi and he worked with Kibicho. But when he resigned, he was not cowed like many others. He walked straight to UDA and is our UDA candidate. <laughs> Takbir. Takbir. One minute. Dogo wa Islamu, your excellency the deputy president Bwana Mudavadi, Bwana Wetangula, all protocols observed. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Tunamshukuru Mwenyezi Mungu na tunaambiwa asiyejua kumshukuru mwanadamu mwenzake hatojua hata kumshukuru Mwenyezi Mungu. Tunakushukuru Deputy President Moso Mamarecho for clearing the myth that was there that was not of course true. Waislamu nikiwakumbusha UDA policy ama UDA manifesto leo yatuambia tuangalie aliye chini zaidi that is in tandem with islamic welfare anatuambia angalia walala hoi sio walala hai sinamna hiyo hata Uislamu unatuambia tuangalie walio chini zaidi. Kwa hivyo it's in tandem with our Islamic welfare and with his kind of heart will move forward a lot as Muslims. Why DP was such a good man he was praised he was done everything. Why did he all of a sudden become a bad man he's called a thief he's called this. Do you know why? because for the first time in the republic of kenya a poor man's son dared to dream to be a president of this country it was meant it was not meant for the poor man's son this was for a few chosen walala highs we are standing with you we know what you go through you cannot all of a sudden be a bad person because you dare to dream on behalf of all the poor sons of this country and all the poor children of this country <laughs> to my fellow aspirants please let us all go to the field and work to make sure this dream becomes true there is a chinese proverb which says a lazy workman corrals his tools yule mfanyikazi mvivu siku zote huli anajembe yake hili ni kiserema hili ni nini oh mimi UDA sijapata hii wacha hiyo twende kwa field since we dare to dream with him let's make it a success wassalamu alaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh inshallah mwenyezi mungu akatakabali dua zenu
I'm sure there are many of our leaders, governors, aspirants, senators who want to speak, and our members of parliament. It's getting late, so you'll indulge me. Now let me call uh, a man from the mountain, and I want to thank the people of the mountain. They stood with us very firmly. I want to call my brother and my friend, Rigadi Gashagwa. Please clap for the leaders from Mount Kenya who stood with us. Clap for him. Takbir. Sheikh Rigadi Gashagwa. Asante. Mweshimiwa Naibu Rais, Mama Rachel, viongozi wetu wote walio hapa, dugu na dalazetu wa islamu, salaim alaikum. Simina jaribu kidogo. Mashukuru kiongozi wetu, mweshimiwa Ade Ndole, ali nialika kwa sababu kwa hii boma ya Naibu Rais, ni midi omze wa nyumba kumi. Because mi naishi tu waba karibu, nikisikia hiko wageni, ninafika kuona kila kitu hiko, sawa sawa. Kwa hivyo mimi nimeshukuru sana kushiriki na waislamu kwa maombi na kwa sherehe ya leo. Sisi pale kwa mulima, watu wengi walikuwa hawelewi sisi. Walikuwa nafikiria sisi, kazi yetu tu ni kutafuta pesa, na kujipenda, na kutharau wengine. Lakini waleo. Wa Kenya wamejua sisi si wana haramu. Sisi ni wangwana. Marafiki wetu wa Islamu wanatuambia thuluma ndio thabi kubwa zaidi. Na sisi tumekubaliana na hawa. Huyu naibu wa rais alitutedea mema. Akasaidia rais wetu huru Kenyata mara mbili akakuwa rais akasimama na yeye akiwa pale kwa hega akamsaidia kuchapa kazi akatembea kila pahali jamhuri ya Kenya alifanya kampeni ya rais kuliko rais mwenyewe na kila mtu waliona siku rais alienda hega alimwachia serikali aliporudi akamlegeshea tulipoambiwa tuthulumu yeye na tumusaliti tukakataa na tukasema hatutathulumu yeye mpaka wa leo tukatishwa tukafungwa tukaambiwa kila kitu tukasema hapana sisi mambo ya dhuluma hatutaki kwa sababu hatutaki kukutana na kiboko cha Mwenyezi Mungu wewe ukitaka kumdhulumu naibu wa rais ufanye peke yako siku ya kukutana na kiboko cha Mwenyezi Mungu ukue peke peke yako na sisi tumesimamia hapo kwa sababu binadamu ambaye hajakosea wewe amekutendea mema amekupenda amekuonesha mapenzi ukiambiwa uthulumu yeye utaanzia wapi na hakuna kitu amekufanyia. Yule alikuwa na kupiga na kukuangaisha unatuambia huyo ndio mzuri. Yule ambaye alikupenda na kukusaidia unatuambia ni mbaya. Sisi tukauliza kiongozi wetu makosa ya huyu William Ruto ni gani? Wakatapatapa hakuna kitu anasema. Oh sijui ni mwizi. Nasema sasa siwezi wako kamiti hakuna mwezi mwezi iko hapa Kenya mtu yote ameiba amefu tukauliza ameiba nini hakuna sijui nini mimi nikisema mtu ni mwizi nyinyi muamini tu kwa sababu nimesema tukasema hapana sisi ni watu tumesoma sisi ni watu tumeelewa tukauliza kama ni kuongea mambo ya wizi pesa ya covid ilibiwa na nani tukauliza kama ni mambo ya wizi mashamba ya maumau ilibiwa na nani Tukauliza kama ni wizi hii bilioni mbili unasema imeibiwa kila siku nani ameiba Hakuna majibu Tunauliza Kibaki aliwacha pesa mingi kwa hii Kenya Sipa, wakati ya Kibaki kulikuwa na pesa 
hii pesa ilienda wapi tukauliza na hii tunasikia ya padora imewekwa huko labda ni ile kibaki aliwacha ndio imefichwa huko na ni nani ameficha huko na ni kwa nini hairudi sikuuliza hiyo maswali tukaambiwa makosa ya hii naibu wa rais ni baba yake hajulikani na mama yake hajulikani hiyo ndio makosa yake na kwa hivyo hata kikani apate uongo sisi tukasema kwa sababu sisi tunaogopa Mwenyezi Mungu hatutaki watoto ya naibu wa rais wadhulumiwe kwa sababu baba yao hajulikani si tufanye yeye kiongozi ndio watoto yake wasikuje kudhulumiwa na sisi tunamheshimu huyu kiongozi Aden Dwale pale kwa mlima yeye ni shujaa akija pale kila mtu anatoa kofia kwa sababu tuliitwa pale kwa ikulu tukakaa kwa hema karibu masaa tano. akaitwa pale ndani akaambiwa wewe tunataka umsaliti na kumdhulumu William Ruto usipofanya namna hiyo tutakunyang'anya kiti akasema mimi ni muislamu siwezi msaliti na siwezi mdhulumu rafiki yangu na yeye akanyang'anywa kiti yake mpaka wa leo. Sasa yeye alitutia nguvu, akatupatia mtisha. Kwa hivyo mimi nataka kuhakikishia nyinyi kama kuna watu watathulumu huyu William Ruto sio watu ya mlima, labda nyinyi. Sisi hata tutakuwa hapo. Na sisi tunauliza rais wetu pale tunampenda sana. Tumemsaidia akakuwa rais na tunamuomba rais tumekusaidia umekuwa rais Mungu amekujali amekusaidia si utosheke na ile tumekusaidia wewe uende upumzike pole pole uachie sisi nafasi tuchague kiongozi tunataka sasa tunauliza watu ya northern kenya na northeastern nyinyi mnajua rais uhuru kuliko sisi sasa mc wake amekataa maneno yake mp wake anaitwa moses kuria amekataa seneta wake anaitwa matangi amekataa Women rep anaitwa Gadhoni wa Muchomba anakataa. Sasa nyinyi ndio mnamjua sisi kuliko sisi. Sisi sisi mambo ya thuluma. Mambo ya thuluma sisi hapana iko hapo. Sisi ni wangwana, sisi ni wacha Mungu. Sisi tutatenda haki kwa sababu siku moja tukifika mbinguni tutajibu maswali ya Mwenyezi Mungu. Ya mwisho. Waislamu wengi kama sisi ni wafanyabiashara kweli ama uongo sisi tunapenda huyu William Mruto kwa sababu ako na mpango ya kufufua uchumi wa Kenya tangu rais Kebake aende tumepata shida mingi bei ya kila kitu imepanda biashara imekuwa ngumu hakuna pesa mfukoni huyu naibu wa rais ametukalisha chini ametupatia mpango kababe wa kufufua uchumi wa Kenya na kupanua biashara sisi tunaomba nyinyi waislamu muungane na sisi tupigie kura akuje afufue uchumi na kwa hivyo nikimalizia tunaomba mambo mawili kwenu maombi na wakati kifika mtupatie kura hata kama kura hutaki usitunyime maombi asanteni sana Mungu awabariki basi wacha nichukue nafasi hii nimuite wakati niliingia bunge 2008 wale watu niliwakuta front bench ministers ilikuwa ni mheshimiwa Moses Watangula mheshimiwa Msalia mheshimiwa Ruto mheshimiwa Rais Uhuru Kenyatta akiwa deputy prime minister so nina wajua sana na nachukua na, nafasi kumkaribisha mheshimiwa former foreign minister alikuwa minority leader akatolewa vile nilitolewa pia alitolewa lakini alitolewa na Raila mimi nilitolewa na uhuru <laughs> ili akuja na kiongozi wa Ford Kenya and a member of the Kenya Kwanza mpigeni makofi mheshimiwa Moses na mbona vile anakaa smart na kanzu <laughs> asante sana ndugu Dwale ndugu zetu wa Islam asalamu alaikum nina furaha isiyo na kifani kuwa mbele yenu leo ndugu yetu naibu rais ambaye ni rais wetu mtarajiwa mama Recho mwenye boma 
viongozi wenzangu na waheshimiwa viongozi wa Waislamu Tumealikwa leo hapa kwa karamu ya iftar. Tumekula, tumekunywa, tumefurahi. Hatuwezi kukosa neno la kusema. Sisi kama viongozi wa nchi yetu jukumu letu ni kuungana, kuunganisha wakenya, kuleta usawa kwa wakenya kuondoa dhuluma kwa wakenya kuondoa upaguzi wa aina yoyote hasa wa kidini na kuhakikisha mkenya popote alipo awe mandera awe malaba ana haki ya kujivunia na kufurahia nje yake na sisi tunawaomba nyinyi waislamu na mimi nimelelewa na jamii moja ya Waislamu kule Bungoma mama anaitwa mama Hirsi Huyo mama amekuwa mama yetu wengi wetu sana Tukeenda shule sisi ambao tulitoka familia zenye hata ukigoogle kwa miaka miwili huwezi kujua jina la baba yetu Tulikuwa tunapata pocket money kwa mama hirsi mama mkarimu ajabu na kila wakati nikiwa bungoma hata ijuma hii mimi nikishirikiana na mama hirsi tumepanga iftari ya waislamu wa bungoma and that's how we live tunataka kuwaomba ndugu zetu unajua kura iko karibu sana nalisikia rafiki yangu mmoja hapa akisema bado wanakagua bado wanasungumuza mkiendelea kusungumuza mtapitwa kwa sababu watu wamejipanga na sisi tumesema hatupangwi ngwi na tunawaomba tukuje pamoja the train is on the ramp it is going to leave and it will leave anyway So if you don't board it will not wait for you. Na hii train inabeleka wa Kenya kwa nchi ya kusadikika. Nchi ya fahamu. Nchi ya ufasaha. Nchi ya raha. Nchi yenye hakuna mdogo hakuna mkubwa. Nchi yenye hatukubali mtu alale njaa. Wakati huu tuna viongozi wa Kenya ukimwambia ulilala njaa anakuuliza kwa nini ulikataa kula hajui kwamba ulilala njaa kwa sababu hakuna chakula because they don't know they were born in wealth they grew up in wealth they live in wealth they adore wealth and they think everybody who doesn't live in wealth there's something wrong with them na ndio sisi tunataka kuleta usawa. Ile pesa wanasungumuzia. Na naibu wa rais wewe unajua umekuwa bunge muda mrefu na sisi. Hakuna wakati wowote Kenya hii msuada ulileta bunge ukaanguka mara mbili. Ijapokuwa ule msuada wa kunyang'anya kaunti zenu za kaskazini pesa na kupeleka kaunti zingine. Na ulipoanguka mara mbili waliotegua ile kitendawili nilikuwa ni mimi na huyu kijana anaitwa Sakaja. Sisi ndiyo tulikuwa joint chairman. Na tuhakikisha ile pesa ilikuwa inanyang'anywa Mandera, Wajia, Masabit, Isiolo, Kwale, Lamu imerudishwa na imeongezwa because that is the only way we can pull our brothers and sisters who have been marginalized since independence to come to the level where others are nimesema mara mingi kwa senate kuna kaunti zingine kule northern kenya watoto walikuwa wanasoma maji ya pipe kwa vitabu walikuwa wanasoma lami kwa vitabu 
ugatuzi umekuja sasa tunaweza kuonja kuona hizi vitu lakini serikali ya awamu ya tano serikali ya Kenya kwanza ikiongozwa na captain wetu William Samuel Ruto tutahakikisha tunainua kila yoyote aliye chini ainuliwe akuje juu yeye pia ajione ya kwamba it is worth your while being a Kenyan that is the only way kwa sababu discrimination exclusion will breed anger will eventually mutate to rebellion and will eventually re mutate to conflict and can eventually lead to a disintegration of a country na inji tunataka kenya to remain the pillar of hope and the beacon of success for this region na sisi zote mwalimu nyerere alikuwa anasema it can be done do your part i'll do mine and it can be done let's do our part we'll all do ours ndio inji ende mbele mwisho kabisa huu ni msimu wa maombi na tukiendelea kuomba Mungu atuteremshie baraka zake na sisi wanasiasa pia tunawaomba kura zenu Tunaomba Mungu awateremkie ikifika tarehe tisa mwezi wa nane, there will be no issue of the money or the box the money or the box Ruto or so and so we have only one candidate na yule mwingine tunabishana naye tunamjua tunamuelewa tunamfahamu we can bisect and analyze his weaknesses from top to bottom and we can tell you he is not good for anything in this country and lastly mujue the agenda of our outgoing president uhuru kinyata is to succeed himself by creating a proxy president a puppet president and a stooge who will sit there and play his game that he thinks he forgot to play my brother president huru kinyata nine years now going to 10 are enough no kenyan will give you an opportunity to be a proxy president and it will not happen asante sana munga wabariki sasa ni muite ndugu yetu msali mdavadi naye wasalimie but remember it is not done until it is done Asante sana. Mimi nitaongea kwa kifupi sana. <coughs> Aya, mnataka mnujue jina langu? Mimi naitwa Sheikh Earthquake Madvd. <coughs> Aya, kwanza nataka nimtambue Sheikh Hasla. Sheikh Chief Hasla Mheshimiwa Deputy President William Ruto na Madam Rachel ambaye wametualika kwao siku ya leo ili tuwe na nafasi ya kujivunia Uislamu Tunajivunia Uislamu kupitia kwa sherehe ya leo na pia kwa sherehe zingine na pia vile imeandikwa katika katiba yetu kwamba ni lazima tuheshimu uhuru wa kuabudu sisi tunataka tudhibitishe kwamba tutatii sheria na tutatii mwanzoni kabisa Mwenyezi Mungu ili yale yote ambayo tutakuwa tukifanya tukitenda na munisikize vizuri kwa sababu nikisema yale tutakuwa tukifanya kwa sababu mimi na imani 
kwamba kupitia kwa Mwenyezi Mungu ala tutapata ushindi tarehe tisa mwezi wa nane mwaka huu yangu ni mawili matatu alafu ni mwalike mwenyeji wetu kwanza tumezungumzia kuhusu uaminifu na hali ya kuwa na umadili ama integrity na tunasimama hapa kwa sababu pia nyinyi wa islam mkifata historia ya Kenya ya kisiasa miaka michache iliyopita pia na nyinyi mlikuwa na mkataba na MOU wakati huo ulikuwa ukisukuma sana na Namlef kweli ama uongo siku ilikuwa na MOU kati ya Uislamu na jamaa wengine kule azimio nini ilifanyika kwa huo mkataba nini ilifanyika waliwarusha sivyo haya sisi tukapata kionjo kule NASA Naruto amepata kionjo kwa ile uhururuto ile ingine. Kwa hivyo sisi tunasimama hapa tukisema ikiwa tunataka tubadilishe siasa ya Kenya na maisha yetu ni lazima yale ambayo tunasema ikiwa yatawekwa kwa mkataba ama ikiwa yatasemwa hadharani mbele ya wa Kenya na pia mbele ya Mwenyezi Mungu ni lazima tuyaheshimu na tutekeleze Ombi langu la pili ni kwamba tu sisi wote nyinyi mkiwemo sisi tukiwemo nadhani tumepita kiwango fulani matope yote wamerushwa kwa ruto yameyeyuka hakuna haja tuzungumzie sana yale sasa kile tunataka tuzungumze ni kwamba tunaelekea wapi tunataka biashara ya wakenya wote inawiri akiwa muislamu asipokuwa muislamu tunataka wakati wanafanya vetting vile dwala alisema hapa tusiwe na waislamu wakiwa profiled wacha ku profile watu kwa kidini ikiwa wanataka kupata passports sidhani muhalifu ameandika dini yake kwa kichwa hapa mbele ataweza kuwa muhalifu wa kikristo anaweza kuwa muhalifu wa kiislamu anaweza kuwa muhalifu wa wale atheist lakini hawaandiki hapa mbele kwa hivyo tuiweke profile ya watu kulingana na dini. Kuna vyombo vya kupeleleza mhalifu ni nani vitumike kwa njia ya kisheria na kikatiba. Lakini tuwache kubagua watu kwa sababu ya dini. Tunataka uchumi wetu ubadilike. Madeni yetu ni mazito. Mazito sana ndugu na dada. Hata kionjo mmepata juzi kuhusu ukosefu wa petroli katika petrol station zetu hiyo ilikuwa kionjo it was a very it, it was a, a consequence of a bigger problem madeni yetu yatatuumiza na ukweli wa mambo sisi ni lazima tuweke serikali ambayo itashughulikia kwa kikamilifu kupigana na hizo shida kwa sababu madeni yakienda juu ushuru unapanda na shortcut ya kupata pahali pa kulipa hayo madeni ni kulenga mafuta kulenga bidhaa za kawaida za wananchi it becomes the easy target for revenue for a government that has 
a terrible appetite for debt and wastage. Kwa hivyo tunawasihi sasa tuanze kupanga vile tutaenda mbele. Jambo lingine weta amezungumza kuhusu hatupangwingwi. Nimeona hapa msomi wakili ambaye ni shujaa sana Abdul Nasir. Sasa niliona mtu mwingine akisema kwamba hata kusema linda kura ni kinyume ya kikatiba. Sasa mimi nauliza wakati mtu anateua agent agent katika polling station sasa mimi labda mimi ni mjinga lakini niambie kazi ya agent kwa polling station ni kufanya nini hiyo ndio terms of reference ya agent sasa hata kulinda kura <laughs> imekuwa mzaha <laughs> katika Kenya hii mambo kama haya ndio tunashangaa tunaelekea wapi wale ambao wamekosa njia wanatafuta mbinu zozote kuharibu kwa hivyo sisi kama wa Kenya na nyinyi wa Islamu mkiwemo na ukweli wa mambo ni kwamba kwa kijiografia kwa upana wa jiografia eneo ambazo waislamu wanaishi kwa wingi ni pana zaidi huge huge territory kulinda kura huko sio rahisi kwa hivyo mimi naomba mulinde kura mulinde kura kwa sababu tarehe tisa hatutaki kusikia chief hasla ana shida tunaelewana hili ni ombi hata sisi tutalinda lakini kila mkenya ambaye anataka haki katika Kenya yetu kwa kidemokrasia IBC ikifanya kazi yake vizuri ni kwamba tulinde kura ndio haki yetu iwe sawa ndugu nadhani nimezungumza ya kutosha now there is a group of kenyans who are called undecided yani hajaamua undecided eh undecided saa zingine hata opinion poll ikifanywa unaona kwamba huyu mkenya ambaye ni undecided opinion ni wengi kushinda yule yuko decided i want to ask you now if you are undecided can you raise your hand if you are undecided can you raise your hand kwa hivyo ni juhudi letu sisi sote let us go and look for those undecided because that is where the mischief will come itatoka pale kwa hivyo mimi nawasihi tu tutafute wale undecided na ukweli wa mambo undecided ni wale wanaitwa sijui middle class eh wale wanakaa wanangoja waone upepo uko vipi mmesikia nikisema kwamba uhuru ameshika remote anafinya left jamaa anaenda left anafinya right anaenda right anafinya pause anaweka pause anaweka sleep anaweka sleep sasa hatutaki afinye remote ya undecided tunelewana na ameshika remote upande ule mwingine na tunaona hata Nairobi sasa uhuru alikuwa ameshika remote moja ya huyu jamaa wa azimio lakini sasa tumeona ameshika remote nyingine ya Nairobi sasa anaanza kucheza karata ni gani atafinya my friends let us not be undecided let us hunt for those who are undecided and bring them on board because that is what is going to make the difference and we want a decisive victory
ladies and gentlemen, a decisive victory. Hatutaki mapetition. Tumechoka na mapetition. We want a decisive victory. A decisive victory kama ile ya Zambia. Hata wakiwa na deep state, hata huyo president akishika remote control yake, alishindwa kufinya kwa sababu wapigaji kura wata, wa Zambia walimunyang'anya hiyo remote. Sisi tunyang'anya huyo jamaa remote yake. Tupigie Kenya kura, Kenya kwanza na chief hustler aje hapa atueleze yeye yuko namna gani ndugu deputy president karibu bwana chief hasla ama ama ni sheikh hasla <laughs> asante sana Shukrani. Viongozi wote wenzangu, Mheshimiwa Musalia, Mheshimiwa Wetangula, Mheshimiwa Gashagwa. Uh, viongozi magavana, maseneta wa bunge, ndugu wa Islamu, asalamu alaikum. Hamjambo mimi kwanza nataka nichukue nafasi hii. Nimshukuru Mungu kwa kutupatia nafasi ili tuweze kupata ushirika huu jioni ya leo. Kwa niaba ya mke wangu nataka niwakaribishe katika makao haya ya naibu wa rais. Karibuni sana. Wale mnakuja hapa mara ya kwanza karibuni wale mnakuja hapa mara nyingine karibuni tena na Mungu akitujalia tupate nafasi ingine mnakaribishwa tena mimi nataka nichukue nafasi hii pia niwashukuru sana mimi kuwa katika makao haya ya naibu wa rais ni kwa sababu ya imani yenu kura zenu na maombi yenu Nataka niseme asante sana. Leo Mungu ametupatia nafasi tuwe na iftar katika makao haya. Nataka niwashukuru sana kwa kuitikia mwito wangu ili tuweze kufanya iftar hii pamoja jioni ya leo wale ambao pengine hamulifanya CRE kwa sababu kuna watu wengi walifanya CRE kulikuwa na jamaa mmoja alialika watu kwake kwa sherehe kaandaa chakula katengeneza mambo mazuri lakini akapata shida wale walialikwa hawakuja akapata shida kubwa sana ikasemekana kwa biblia alienda barabarani akaenda kusimamisha kila mtu mwenye anapita anaambia jameni karibuni kuna mlo na washukuru sana kwa sababu kama hamunge kuja ningekuwa na hiyo kazi ngumu pale barabara <laughs> ya kusimamisha watu wakuja wakule so thank you very much for coming na washukuru sana. Leo eh, nimefurahi sana kwamba tumepata nafasi hii na nimeona ndugu wa Islamu wengi wamefika hapa. Nitajaribu kufupisha kwa kusema maneno mat, ama mambo matatu hivi. Ya kwanza <laughs> Ya kwanza mimi nataka niwashukuru sana waislamu. Na washukuru sana kwa sababu imani ya Ukristo niliyo nao imechochewa sana na waislamu. Nilikuwa 
na nafasi moja na askofu wangu anaitwa Silas Yego huyu askofu akaniambia mimi niko na wivu sana na ndugu zetu waislamu vile wanavyopenda Mungu vile wanavyochukua muda wao kuomba mara tano vile wanavyoendesha mambo yao na kulinda imani yao huyo askofu wangu anaitwa Silas Yego akaniambia i wish christians would be like muslims and i know silas yego is somewhere and possibly he will he is listening that's what he told me ni mnanielewa akasema i wish christians were as serious in their faith like muslims mnajua mara nyingi nimelaumiwa sana kuwa mkristo huyu mtu inaonekana mkristo sana huyu <laughs> lakini hii ukristo imechochewa na uislamu <laughs> we are trying to be as good a christian as the muslims are nyinyi mnanielewa na ndio mna ndio mnaona and my good brother aden duale amesema hapa ya kwamba as a christian i have always na mimi nataka niwashukuru sana waislamu kwa sababu mmenipa nafasi mzuri sana ya kumtumikia Mungu pale mnaponiita shughuli ya madrasa pale mnaponiita mambo ya misikiti it is always a pleasure to give to god kwa sababu kwa biblia tunafundishwa ukifanya ukimpa mtu maskini ama ufanye kazi ya Mungu ya madrasa kanisa ama misikiti ni kama kumkopesha Mungu Ni mnanielewa So nataka niwaulize ndugu waislamu Sisi tunawaheshimu sana kama wakristo we we value the way you value your faith na mnatusaidia hata na sisi vile mnafiofunga nyinyi hata katika boma hii tunafunga si ndio sasa mchue hii ukristo niko naye imechochewa na uislamu mlio nayo so we are working on the same on the same faith mimi nataka niwaulize kwa heshima Mnajua tuko na watu ambao hawaamini Mungu kwa hii Kenya. Na nyinyi mnawajua. Si ndio? Eh mnawajua. Wako na matatizo makubwa. Wakisikia ya kwamba kuna matoleo ya kanisa wanapika makelele. Wakisikia kuna matoleo ya misikiti wanapiga makelele na mara nyingi mimi nimepigana sana na hawa watu nimemanyana sana na wao mara hata siku nyingine mlisikia walikuwa wanasema ati wanataka kubadilisha sheria kule bunge ya matoleo kanisani ati ndio kuwe na viwango na nikaambiwa na jamaa moja hapa anaitwa Sakaja akaniambia wakati mmoja yule anakumulika mchana usiku atakuchoma mumesikia hawa wanasema ati wanataka kufunga makanisa mengine madogo madogo hawa wanaofunga makanisa madogo madogo watafunga msikiti usiku 
kwa hivyo mjihadhari msiniwachie mimi peke yangu ati mimi namenyana na hawa watu hata na nyinyi mtukuje mtusaidiane <laughs> sasa nyinyi mnafikiria ya kwamba kama wako na shida na matoleo kanisani wako na amani na matoleo misikitini So jameni tuungane tutetee imani yetu kwa Mungu. Hawa watu wasikuje wakazuia mambo ya Mungu yakaendelea dunia hii. Ama namna gani my friends? Tunaelewana? Jambo la pili. Mimi nataka mjue ya kwamba sisi wote ni wa Kenya. Na hakuna mkenya ambaye ni tofauti na mkenya mwenzake. Uraia wetu ni uraia moja. Hakuna uraia ya Mkristo, hakuna uraia wa Muislamu. Uraia ni uraia wa Kenya. Mambo yale mengine yanaendelea katika Kenya yetu ni ile waingereza wanasema evil thrives when good men keep quiet alafu ikasemekana pia ya kwamba we will not remember the aggression of our enemies but we will remember the silence of our friends So kuna mambo mawili ambayo saa zingine inawasumbua kama wafugaji na kama waislamu. Mumesikia maneno ya formula hapa. Wakati formula ililetwa ikasemekana ya kunyang'anya hawa na kuongezea hawa. Wale wa kuongezewa baadhi yao ilikuwa sisi lakini tulisema we don't want a formula that brings a win lose outcome because there is a possibility of having a win win outcome we defeated and i want to say thank you to our friends in senate we defeated the win lose formula and the win win formula succeeded where every county was getting something <laughs> mimi nimetembea kenya sana mpaka nika bandikwa tanga tanga nimetembea kenya sana i have been to many places in kenya i went to a place called karebur in Lodwa in Turkana na hiyo karebur wananchi wamekuja kwa mkutano wako uchi I, I, I mean naked sasa hata vile ya kuongea kwa hii mkutano siju unaangalia pande <laughs> you don't even know mahali ya kuangalia ni, ni shida I have been to many areas ndugu mmoja amesema hapa wananchi wako na njaa kuna sehemu mifugo inakufa kwa sababu ya kiangazi watoto kina mama na sehemu hizo nyingi ni sehemu za wafugaji ambazo pia ni sehemu za waislamu ni kweli ama kweli ukisikia mtu anasema watu ambao wanalala njaa mahali ambapo mifugo inakufa kwa sababu ya kiangazi 
mahali ambapo wamama na watoto wanaenda masiku bila chakula ati hizo sehemu hazina haja na pesa ati they don't deserve the money they get huyo ni mtu ako na wazimu honestly there is no rational leader anywhere knowing the situation in northern kenya there is no leader reasonable anywhere in kenya that can say our northern kenya does not deserve the resources they get unless you don't live in kenya and therefore i want to give you assurance that we will continue to balance the resources of our country and to provide affirmative action so that our areas that are traditionally marginalized that have more challenges than others continue to deserve the resources they get so that we can make those areas part of Kenya Mimi mnanielewa Na niseme hivi Mumesema tuko na changamoto ya mambo mengi tuko cha changamoto ya ID tuko na changamoto ya passport tuko na changamoto kwa sababu ya identities fulani fulani I want to give you my word our commitment is that we will have one identity as the people of Kenya <laughs> na hakutakuwa na citizen aina mbili tutakuwa na citizenship aina moja ya wakenya wote it doesn't matter where you come from it doesn't matter your faith it doesn't matter your color so long as you are a kenyan you will have the same treatment as every other kenyan jambo la tatu mimi nataka mjue hivi mimi nimekuwa kwa bahati ya Mwenyezi Mungu nimekuwa naibu wa rais. Na nimepata experience kidogo ya kujua what is possible and what is not possible. Mimi nataka niwaambie hivi. The first five years of our administration we started the 10000 km program we did 80% of it tulianza mpango wa technical training college to transform our education we built 170 technical training colleges in kenya tukaanza mpango wa rural electrification saa hizi tumefikisha watu milioni 8 na nusu wa kenya walio na stima tukaanza mpango ya mambo ya matibabu tulikuwa na watu milioni tatu na laki nane tukafikisha almost 7.2 million in our first term i tell you good people that my experience of our first term has built faith in me that we can transform our country in our lifetime he inchi tunaweza kuibadilisha sisi wote tukiwa bado tunaishi na ndio sababu hiyo katika Kenya kwanza tumesema tuko na mpango na hiyo mpango inaambatana na dini ya Kiislamu inaambatana na dini ya Kikristo hiyo mpango ya bottom up pale tunasema tunataka kuanza na vijana wa Kenya and it must be deliberate we have close to 5 million young people out of school vijana milioni tano. hawa vijana ni lazima tuwe na mpango makusudi deliberate 
ya vile tutawapangia ajira and we have a plan for it hapo tuko na mpango wa kuwajumuisha wa Kenya karibu milioni kumi ambao wanafanya biashara ndogo micro small enterprise katika kubadilisha mapato yao leo they earn between a dollar two dollars maybe three dollars a day we can double these 10 million kenyans in our sme sector we can double their daily income from 1 2 3 dollars to 7 8 10 dollars by just changing small things leo huyu mzee sio mzee sana mtu wa rika yangu amesema hivi kwamba hatuwezi kuzungumza mambo fulani kwa sababu ya njaa and 50 years after independence surely we must sort out the issue of hunger and the issue of cost of living that is fueled by high cost of basic food items na mwisho tumesema god willing kwa mapenzi ya Mungu tunasema inshallah kabla ya disemba mwaka huu tunataka kila mmoja wetu awe na bima ya afya ya NHIF and it is possible i say it is possible because i have seen it happen tunaelewana jameni so we have a plan na tunataka hii nchi yetu let us not delegate it to other people we are the ones to fix it sisi ndio tuta tutarekebisha hii nchi na mimi nataka ni waombe kama ndugu wa Kristo waislamu na wale wengine wote tushikamane na tufanye hiyo kazi pamoja and that is why tunawaeleza ya kwamba tunataka tuungane pamoja na nyinyi tubadilishe hii Kenya na tusonge mbele tukiwa pamoja na mwisho um, nataka ni, ni wape wasia kama kiongozi hasa nyinyi watu wa imani because you are men of faith men and women of faith mnaamini Mungu si ndio tunapowachagua viongozi mimi karibu sasa ni kuwe mzee nilikuwa kijana muda lakini sasa nimeanza kuwa mzee mimi na, nataka niwapatie advice as an elder and as a, as a leader in Kenya wakati tunachagua viongozi let us avoid group mbili group ngapi mbili tusichague mtu mjinga kwa sababu hana mpango na tusichague mtu muoga kwa sababu hana imani na hana Mungu. Mmenielewa? Those two. <laughs> mtu wa, mtu mjinga atawasumbua sana. Kwa sababu hana mpango. Sasa tibim tialala ria o oh, muda inaisha mara sijui rege sijui nini atawaharibia muda na msichague mtu muoga (laughs) 
let me say the following. Huyu, huyu ndugu yangu Adendwale. Let me say something about my brother Adendwale. Huyu Adendwale ni rafiki yangu. Tumetembea safari ya siasa pamoja na yeye. Tunakubaliana na yeye kwa sababu nikimwambia naenda kujenga kanisa ananiandikia check napeleka kanisani akienda kwa msikiti kujenga anachukua pesa yangu anapeleka kwa msikiti kujenga tunakubaliana kwa imani yeye si mtu mkamilifu i cannot say he's a perfect man si ndio kwa sababu yeye si nabii ni mtu tu hakuna matatizo yake hapa pia unajua <laughs> sisi wote <laughs> lakini huyu duale si mtu muoga that one i know hmm? and he will speak his truth the way he knows how and he will always stand on the right side of history tunaelewana so mimi nasema huyu duale ni rafiki yangu because tunakubaliana mambo ya Mungu na tumekataa mambo ya uoga kwa sababu hii uoga iko na hasara kubwa Nishamwambia huyu duale kwa Biblia mtaenda kusoma wale ni wasomi Kitabu inaitwa Revelations Ishirini na moja mstari wa nane. Nasema kati ya watu ambao hawawezi kwenda mbinguni ni watu waoga Sasa hii uoga iko na hasara mara mingi. Uoga itakunyima itaku mambo hapa duniani na mbinguni pia ukose. Unaona ile hasara iko kwa hii. Na ndio hii Kenya saa hii inaendeshwa na kuuzia watu uoga. Mambo ya mashetani. Because how how do you drive a country using blackmail and threats and intimidation na kuzia watu uoga as people of faith we must refuse to be sold fear hakuna mtu amealikwa kenya hakuna mtu ako matembezi as a tourist kenya hakuna mtu mkimbizi kwa hii kenya sisi wote ni wa kenya kama namna gani mnanielewa please good people everybody we must defend our citizenship and our right to make choices as the people of Kenya mimi sio nabii si mnajua hivyo mimi ni hasla tu ya hapa dunia lakini mimi niliwaambia hii rege itakuja kusimama ndio walipitisha wakapitisha wakapitisha kwa account assembly kapitishwa wapi ikapitishwa wapi lakini kwa sababu ilikuwa na dhulma ndani yake there is no way Mungu angeruhusu hiyo dhulma ifaulu katika Kenya hii asimio itaenda barabara ya BBI Na nimesema mimi si nabii Itaenda barabara hiyo Sawa sawa So mimi nataka niwashukuru sana kwa kuchukua muda wenu I know you people as I, as has been said here 
sio ya kwamba hamuna chakula kwenu lakini tulikuja hapa ili tufurahie pamoja na tuweze kupata hii e, faraga pamoja na mimi nawashukuru sana kwa kunitembelea na kuja ili tufanye sherehe hii pamoja na watakia heri asalamu alaikum mungu awabariki sana